In this video, I'm going to import one of Rob's pre-baked systems, the Staunch Systems Trader example system from chapter 15 of his systematic trading book. Some key points about this system to be aware of upfront are, it is deployed across six instruments, these being futures contracts such as Euro, Dollar and Corn. It uses three variations of the trend following exponentially weighted moving average cross rule, and it also uses the carry rule. Past performance suggests the system can achieve a sharp ratio of around 0.4. The system targets an annualized volatility, aka annualized standard deviation, of returns of 20%. The system assumes we start with a quarter of a million dollars, but we can easily change that later. To begin, we import various Pi system trade classes and objects, each of which is sourced from various Pi system trade modules. From syscore.objects import arg not supplied. The syscore objects is a module that allows you to do fun things with objects and classes. Sysdata.sim.csv futures sim data is a module that allows you to get data from CSV files used for futures trading. In other words, it gives us access to the price data we need. In a future video, I would like to source the price data instead from my own CSV files. Importing config from sysdata.config.configdata enables us to use configuration files to control the behavior of the trading system, including the trading rules underpinning the system. A config object can be derived from a YAML file yet another markup language file or a Python dictionary. System from systems.base system is the base class which all systems inherit from. In Rob's books, trading systems are composed of seven stages and require data, prices, and optionally a config as we imported up here. In our case, as just mentioned, we certainly will be supplying the system with a config. From systems.rawdata, import raw data. Raw data is the first of the seven stages. It is the stage in which data is pre-processed for subsequent use by our trading rules and to scale positions and anything else that might be needed. This famous diagram from Rob's systematic trading book gives a bird's eye view of the whole system, which I'll briefly speak about now. I have drawn in myself that first stage, that data pre-processing stage, also known as raw data. The second stage is called simply rules, where the individual trading rules are defined. The third stage is called forecast scale cap, where we refine the forecasts generated by each of the trading rules. Stage four is forecast combine, where we combine in an appropriate way, the individual forecasts for a given instrument produced by the various trading rules. Pos position sizing is stage five, where based on the combined forecast for a given instrument and in informed also by our desired volatility target, which, which is 20% for us, the system generates, if you will, a recommended position to have in a given instrument. The sixth stage is called portfolios, which is where the recommended position for the each of the instruments takes into account that we are trading a diverse basket of instruments. And um, naturally those instruments are not perfectly correlated with one, other, one another, hence, hence the need to revise the final recommended positions. And I have also drawn on stage seven, which is simply called account, which is where within Pi system trade, you can ask Python, uh, how much profit did my system make over the last year or what have you onwards. From systems.forecasting import rules, as just mentioned, rules is stage two of the trading system, the stage in which the trading rules used by the system are defined. Those trading rules generate raw forecasts, positive or negative numbers that basically reflect how much we like the trade and do we want to be long or short. 
We won't be defining any individual trading rules today since we're relying on Rob's pre-baked system to do all that for us. The behavior of this pre-baked system is defined by the config. And as I said before, includes three variations of a trend following trading rule and one carry trading rule. Import forecast scale cap. That stage three of the trading system is the stage in which the various forecasts for each trading rule are scaled between minus 20 and plus 20. Plus 20 meaning a strong buy signal, minus 20 being a strong sell, plus 10 being a standard buy signal, minus 10 being a standard sell signal. To get a scaled forecast, you take each of your raw forecasts from stage two and multiply it by the so-called forecast scalar. The forecast scalar is unique to each trading rule. In Rob's books and or his blog, he provides some fixed numbers for the forecast scalars that he worked out himself. But alternatively, Pi System Trade has the capability of estimating the appropriate forecast scalars from more recently available price data. That's obviously something we would have had to do if we were introducing a new trading rule that Rob hasn't already calculated and published the appropriate forecast scalars for. Import forecast combined, that's stage four of a trading system, is the stage in which for each instrument, the various forecasts across each trading rule are combined and then multiplied by the so-called forecast diversification multiplier. My understanding of this diversification multiplier is that it's there to help ensure the combined forecasts for any given instrument have a long run average absolute value of 10 just as is the case for any individual forecast. That's what I meant by 10 is, a, is the standard buy signal, 10 is the standard sell signal. And by, by doing that, we help the system to achieve its long run target volatility, which we have set to 20%. And I think that if not for this um, diversification multiplier, the system would have a tendency to undershoot its volatility target because when you combine multiple trading rules that are not perfectly correlated with each other, you end up lowering volatility through the diversification effect. So the multiplier acts as a counterbalance, I think. Import position sizing, that's stage five. It's where for any given instrument, the combined forecast is turned into a subsystem position. Subsystem refers to a combination of trading rules in the context of a single instrument and position simply refers to the number of futures contracts. The system wants you to be long or short in that instrument. It is informed by your target volatility and your trading capital. This picture helps me understand subsystems a little. Now there are humans in this picture. Obviously our system doesn't involve humans, but this is just how I'd like to explain it. I have a central pot of a quarter of a million dollars in trading capital and I have several subsystems. I have the corn subsystem, the euro dollar subsystem, the VIX subsystem and so on. And, and, and maybe just for, our, just for, for the, the sake of this explanation, let's imagine that, that so each of those subsystems is actually managed by a, an individual. We've got the corn guy, the euro dollar guy and so on. Well, the capital is going to be divided in some fashion across the subsystems. And the position that I want the corn guy to take in corn, well, that depends on what the subsystem position is. I want the system to tell me be long six corn contracts, for example. Moving on, import portfolios, that's stage six. It is the stage in which the recommended positions are calculated on a portfolio basis. That is, taking full appreciation of the fact we will be applying this system across many instruments. This stage therefore introduces the concept of instrument weights and also the diversification multiplier. In the previous stage, position sizing, the system worked out the recommended position for individual subsystems. In the portfolio stage, we acknowledge this the fact we'll be trading a diverse range of partially uncorrelated instruments. And hence, the volatility of the system is reduced. And hence, a diversification multiplier is introduced as a counterbalance to help achieve our target volatility of 
the adjusted position, adjusting for that um, multiplier, is then multiplied again by the given instrument weight to give a portfolio weighted position or in plainer English, it gives you the final recommended position for a given instrument. Altogether, the recommended positions depend on several factors, including how much money do we have? I've got a quarter of a million dollars. The volatility of the instruments being traded. The volatility target for the system, which is 20% in our case. The strength of the forecast. And our forecasts are capped between minus 20 and plus 20. And if the forecast is plus 10, which I've described before as a standard buy signal, well, I guess the best way of explaining that is to say, if it was, if in a different case, the forecast was plus 20, then the system is saying double down on that position because I'm really confident. And the, uh, the recommended positions also depend on how many instruments you might be trading at the same time, which is up to six in our case. Naturally, if you have more instruments, then they will each be receiving a lower instrument weight. Or to put it another way, if I've got loads of subsystems, then that's lots of different subsystems that I have to divide my limited capital across. Moving on. Account is stage seven of a trading system. It's the stage in which you work out how much profit or loss the system made over some period of time. We already know Rob's system would in the past have achieved a sharp ratio of 0 0.4. Will it remain successful in the future? We can only hope. Regrettably, the founders of systematic trading firm AHL, Rob's former employer, have observed that the performance of a trading system probably decays over time. We should therefore not be too upset if this system fails to deliver 0 0.4 sharp ratio over the next 20 years. Okay, we've imported all that stuff. Now for the pre-baked system that I've been alluding to. Define futures system. This is the system, the pre-baked system. We'll start by saying data, not supplied. Config, not supplied. Trading rules, not supplied. Log level equals on. When it sets on, Pi system trade will, I think, print everything that is being logged by the system. I think this is just a reporting mechanism. So the system keeps you, the user, informed about what is happening at each stage. Moving on. If data is not supplied and we didn't supply it, then by default, the data is coming from CSV futures sim data. Remember we imported this several cells above? And I mentioned in future, I'd like to try supplying my own CSV data instead of using Rob's. If config is not supplied, and we said here it's not supplied, then by default, set the config equal to this pre-baked config file that is stored on Rob's GitHub. Well, actually we did several cells above, you'll re recall, we imported config. This YAML file is the guts of the pre-baked system. And we'll look at that YAML file, the config in detail later. Rules equals rules, which we imported earlier. Trading rules, which we didn't, which we didn't supply. We haven't specified the trading rules because we know the config file is going to define the trading rules. System equals system. And in that, we pass the seven stages of a trading system. Rob states that it doesn't matter what order you pass these stages, but I have organized them in their natural order anyway. Stage one is raw data, the pre-processing stage. Rules is where you define the trading rules. Or, but of course, in our case, we're not defining any trading rules because we, we're going to rely on a config file, the pre-baked system. Forecast scale cap. Forecast combine, position sizing, portfolios, where you calculate the positions for each instrument, taking account of the fact that we're trading a bunch of diverse instruments, and stage seven account, which enables us to evaluate the performance of the system. Data, well, that's the CSV futures sim data we imported, 
and the config is the YAML file. And the logging level we set to on, remember. And this function, finally, it just returns the system, which basically means all of these seven stages working together in combination. So the critical element in all of that was the config, the, the YAML file. That's the pre-baked system. And what is that file exactly? Well, I've copied and pasted it into this cell. Let's take a look. It starts by defining some trading rules. And those trading rules are being sourced from systems, the systems module of Pi System Trade. There's no need for us to redefine exactly how the EWMAC rule is calculated. It's, it's being imported. The data is coming via the stage one, the raw data pre-processing stage. For this trading rule, we have a fast moving average with a look back window of two and a slow look back window of eight. And here's the forecast scalar that we discussed earlier. And then the same pattern repeats here, but for a slightly slower moving average rule and then a slightly slower moving average rule and another and another and another. And we also define the carry trading rule. And the forecast cap, as mentioned earlier, is set at 20. The, the forecast will never be allowed to be greater than plus 20 or lower than minus 20. Each of those trading rule forecasts is weighted. <clears throat> the, the carry rule, quite impressively, is given a 50% weighting. So obviously Rob has a lot of faith in carry. The trend type rules are in, in total receiving 50%, but the middle rule receives only 8%. Why only 8? Because, because this rule being sandwiched in between these two is highly, well, it's highly correlated with this faster rule and this slower rule. So it just doesn't make sense to give it high weighting because it would just be kind of mimic, mimicking what this rule and this rule already provides the system. Just a side note regarding carry. During a recent podcast Rob po participated in, one of the authors of a book, The Rise of Carry, speculated that the world may be drifting away from a carry regime. In other words, maybe this carry rule will not perform as well over the next 20 years as it has over the last 20 years. That would be a shame for this system. I mentioned the forecast diversification multiplier earlier, which has been hard-coded by Rob in this pre-baked system as 1.31. The target volatility is 20%, as mentioned. Hence, we need to be at peace with the idea of a $50,000 drawdown. That's a plausible outcome in any given year. It could easily be worse than that. The trading capital is set at a quarter of a million dollars. We could easily change that. The instrument weights some to 100%, the VIX receives less than 10%. Because this instrument has negative skew characteristics, which we don't like to have too much of. Instrument diversification multiplier, as we mentioned that earlier, and it's been hard coded at 1.89. This is interesting. The remainder of the YAML file just labels in different ways the trading rules and the instruments. So fast trend, medium trend, slow trend, trend, carry, countries, uh, the, the base countries for the instruments, the asset classes of the instruments. I can't, I'm not sure exactly what benefit this does. I had to guess here that when it comes to evaluating the performance of this system, it might be helpful to have these labels so that you can say, show me what was the performance only of the carry trading rule in respect of risky instruments. I think this is a good place to end the video. We've imported a pre-baked system, a system that Rob reckons could achieve a sharp ratio of around 0.4, which is good. We've briefly discussed what exactly it was that we imported and how each of the, those imported lines of code relate to the overall trading system framework described in Rob's books. We've looked at the all important config YAML file, which defines the core features of the pre-baked system. In later videos, I'd like to play around with this pre-baked system. I'd also like to try supplying my own price data instead of using Rob's. And then perhaps we can explore making changes to the config file, 
adding or subtracting new rules and instruments and so forth. 